Okay, we are finishing the war today. The Civil War lasts a little over four years. Um, it is the deadliest war in American history for Americans. Uh, more Americans die in this war than any other war that we have fought in. It was a uh, total war where everybody in the country was um, involved in some point. No one was left untouched by it. The tactics used in the war um, were to utterly destroy their enemy at certain points, and and many people um, served in one way or another. Now, we know, general knowledge of history, that the North will win this war. Um, if not, then we'd be two different countries today. But we are one, so the North does prevail. The first couple years of the war, however, it didn't look like that. The South was winning uh, the majority of the battles. Even the battles that the North did win, like Antietam, weren't, weren't full victories. But the North did have several advantages that they will put to good use um, as the war goes on. They're more industrious. Uh, they have more people and more wealth in general. And uh, they use their industry, their their railroad and their their telegraph and their new weapons and, and knowledge of medicine that the South doesn't have um, to their advantage. So things will start to change for them. At the very beginning of the war, they adopted a strategy. If you remember that, it's the Anaconda plan to, to blockade the South um, and then to kind of and then go up the Mississippi River and just completely surround them. Now this would take time but it would be effective. Um, so by 1863, about two years into the war, they have succeeded in fully blockading the South. And now it, they're putting a stranglehold on them like a snake or an anaconda would do. They did this by taking key cities amongst the uh, uh, along the Mississippi River, New Orleans, Memphis. And the most important victory that finally secured this uh, the success of this plan was the Battle of Vicksburg. And that's uh, maybe not a major city, but it was a major crossing point between um, the southern states along the Mississippi. So when this battle is won, and this is won by Ulysses S. Grant, who is gaining more and more fame as the war goes on, they cut off these states. So Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas are now cut off from the South. The South loses three um of their, their states, three places that can provide them resources and troops. So, even though the East has been full of Southern victories now, the, the West is slowly implementing, or the North is slowly implementing their plan in the West and, and starting to turn the tide. Now, because of this, and because of the realization that the North is, um, does have more resources than them, the South does start to think, well, we can't just wait the North out. Maybe we need to beat the North at their own game. So they did have one earlier attempt at invasion with Antietam, but that didn't work. He's going to try one more time to invade the North. Um, and he's going to get as far as Pennsylvania this time with the general idea to beat them on their own territory, lure the armies North, and then swoop back around and take Washington, D.C. However, this fails at Gettysburg, the most famous battle of the Civil War. Um, General Lee and vast majority of the Southern Army will come north. Um, they will be met by the Northern Army at uh, Gettysburg, a town in South Central Pennsylvania, about three hours from here. And they will be defeated over a course of a three day battle. Um, many people would die, over 50,000 people would. Uh, Casualties would happen in that three days, um, so more than Antietam, but Antietam was a single day, whereas Gettysburg happens over the course of three days. Um, it kind of ends with this this charge of uh, the Southern Cavalry under George Pickett up a hill and right into Union gunfire and was just a, a massacre. You can't win if you don't have the high ground is the lesson of this battle. Um, we're going to do a lot more with this battle, but unfortunately, given the circumstances that we, we cannot, uh, do want to encourage you to, to learn about on your own. Um, 
I just went this last summer. It's not the first time I've been there, but but I went again just because it's an easy drive and it's a very interesting place. They, they, you can see um, pretty much every regiment, northern or southern, has their own monument out in Gettysburg for honoring the people that fought there. We have um, they have interactive med battlefield um, tours and they have museums and a bunch of other things. They have uh, Gettysburg is supposed to be the most one of the most haunted places in the United States. So they have ghost tours and all that stuff too. Uh, historical sites visited by Lincoln and other uh, the famous generals. It is an, actually a pretty interesting, fun place. Um, reading suggestions: This book, The Killer Angels. It's a uh, it's written like a novel, not not like a history text. So it's uh, basically like first point or point of view from each of the. Um, major players in the battle so that's a very good book to read they made a movie about it um gettysburg and there are several movies you can see to learn more but we're not going to spend too much time on it today um given the circumstances and also because you can should have already read about it in your textbook so make sure you've done that one of the important results of the battle was the gettysburg address and this is the most famous speech by abraham lincoln during his presidency um, sticks out there above the Emancipation Proclamation and his inaugural addresses. Uh, it is short, less than three minutes when, when he spoke it. It's a picture from, from the actual um, day of the Gettysburg Address. It's very hard to make Lincoln out there, but look for the top hat. There's actually a couple there, but maybe you can find them. Uh, but it is a tone setting for, for not just the rest of the war and not just the rest of Lincoln's presidency, but for our country's future after the war as well. Um, there are many famous lines from it. The most famous you may have heard before, that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from this earth. This is um, a sentiment of Lincoln's pro-democratic ideals. Um, and for everybody, um, for the people of the North, for the people of the South, and for the formerly enslaved peoples that will become free after the war. Um, the government is meant to be um, open and democratic for all. This room here in Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Museum in Oakland and Pittsburgh, uh, this is where you're going to have your graduation when you graduate as high schoolers. Uh, that's the Gettysburg Address on the back wall that will be what you're looking at as you're looking upon the stage waiting um, to graduate. So that's a very important speech in um, American history and made in the aftermath of the Battle of Gettysburg at the site, uh, honoring those who died, but also letting out a little, um, little idea of what Lincoln expects our country to be like going forward. <coughs> Sorry. So, um, after Gettysburg and after Vicksburg, the tide has clearly turned um, in favor of the North, and it will not turn back. The North has gone through a series of generals. Um, McClellan was, was back in charge at Gettysburg, but Lincoln still does not get along with him. And he will soon turn to General Ulysses S. Grant, who won at Vicksburg, to be um, the commander-in-chief of the Union armies. So early in 1864, he is chosen, um, and Grant will continue and kind of expand upon the idea of total war. Um, believes that he must just completely devastate the South, give them a taste of war that they will never want to experience again. And he turns to uh, some of his generals to do this, including William Tecumseh Sherman, who will be ordered to first take Atlanta, the city of Atlanta, one of the biggest cities in the South uh, today as then, um, and then march out and take Savannah on the coast. Um, and when Sherman does this, he does this with huge ferocity. He burns Atlanta, he burns Savannah, and he tears up everything in between. So a long march, um, very successful military campaign for the Union, um, destroys the Southern countryside and, more importantly, the Southern morale here. Um, in the aftermath of a couple big defeats, and, and the South really starts to lose steam. Now, both Grant and Sherman um, can be considered somewhat controversial for their tactics during the war. Um, but again, there's a lot of myth-making going into history, into the Civil War. 
I left a couple quotes from Lee and Lincoln in a previous PowerPoint, um, maybe saying not to completely villainize Lincoln or Lee, and then maybe not to completely uphold Lincoln like their 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 stereotypes that they're given. Um, same with Lee and or same with Sherman and Grant. Um, they're not just bloodthirsty guys. Um, Grant especially gets a lot of um, attacks. Some people called him a drunk, which is not ne not necessarily true. He was very um, serious and very attentive to his duties. Um, he would become president later, and people would say he was a corrupt president. It's also not necessarily true. Um, but neither of these guys were necessarily bloodthirsty. They didn't prefer to fight. Grant had retired from the army before the war only came back as a sense of duty. Sherman, um, because of this march to sea and this this great example of total war, is often seen as this this um, bloodthirsty guy, but he's, again, not really. These guys just wanted to end the war quickly and save more lives doing so. Now, the war does finally come to an end at Appomattox Courthouse um, in Virginia, and Lee um, will surrender to Grant here. Um, after a couple victories where, where it's now clear to him that the South cannot win, he formally surrenders, presents his sword to Grant, says the South will stand down. What's important about this episode is that Grant, instead of punishing Lee and the Southern leaders and the soldiers he brings with him, he allows them to go home in peace. Um, and this graciousness in victory is Grant signaling to them that we are now one country again. We are brothers. We are not going to punish you in the ways that we could. Um, and that will be very important um, in helping put the country back together again after the Civil War. That period of the country is known as Reconstruction. It's what we're going to be looking at this, this last week of class coming up here. So that's it for today. If you have questions or need more clarification on anything after you've done the reading and watch this video, come to office hours and I will help you out. Uh, tomorrow I'll put up some study materials for next week's quiz and you'll get back to work on your project. Have a great one.